Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now over the last few days I've been using 2017's Intel Core i7-8700 and found that it's still a pretty solid CPU capable of running all my favourite games. The 8700 is based on the Coffee Lake architecture and utilises socket 1151, the motherboards for which can be quite reasonable in price these days but it depends on where you live. Sometimes, however, buying one as part of a pre-built can actually work out cheaper than building from scratch. After being pleasantly surprised by the i7's capabilities, I thought it might be interesting to see how it compares to my newer i5-12400F, the CPU I've been using in my personal system for quite a while now. How well do 6 cores and 12 threads from 2017 compare to 6 cores and 12 threads from 2022? Let's find out. I've paired both with 32 gigs of 3200 MHz dual channel DDR4 as well as an RTX 2080 Ti. First, the Cinebench and DaVinci Resolve rendering benchmarks. The Cinebench result makes it clear that the i5 is the faster performer, but the i7 still does a decent job. Comparative results add context for sure, they help highlight how much things have changed, but they shouldn't detract from the 8700's capabilities. The same can be said for the DaVinci Resolve render test. The i5-12400F completed the test in 41 seconds, but the i7 still put in a respectable time of 51 seconds and it is certainly good enough for 1080p 60fps video editing and rendering even if you might have to be a little more patient let's take a look at some gaming results now then for our first result we have Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 at 1080p with the Ultra preset. On the left of the screen we have the i7-8700 result and on the right we have the i5-12400F. This will stay the same throughout the entirety of this video. At least it will if I've edited it correctly. 71fps for the 8700 with a 1% low of 45 and a 0.1% low of 37. The i5 board held with 89 and improved percentile figures. Now if you have a lower end, let's say a mid range or entry level graphics card, then you may find that the results are closer together because you'll run into a GPU limitation first. If you're using something like a RX 6600 for example from AMD then you'll find that the results on average will at least be closer but you might still find a few differences with those percentile lows because the newer architecture will bump those figures up a little bit. In Red Dead Redemption 2 I took a trip through Valentine, these town areas as well as the city of San Denis of course do tend to be more demanding on the CPU. Both chips however averaged over 100 FPS and both maintained at least 60 FPS in terms of the 1% figure. In fact both chips retained at least 60 FPS in terms of that 0.1% figure as well, the i7-8700 hitting 63 and the 12400F hitting 66. So Really not bad here for both CPUs. A very nice result for the i7-8700 actually. Still a very capable choice for not that much money. Next up we have CS... No, sorry, CS2. Almost said CSGO then. 1080p with the lowest settings. I have noticed that CS2 is more demanding than CSGO was. But I think that was always going to be the case and we're still getting decent results here. The i7-8700 is hitting over 200 frames per second, 216 to be precise, and the i5-12400F 286. Now what I have noticed with CS2 as opposed to CSGO is that I'm seeing a lot less stutter and frame drops across pretty much all the hardware I've tested. The game seems to be a lot smoother than its predecessor, but maybe that's just me. Let me know your experiences down below. It is a good result for both chips, with both of them maintaining over 60 FPS for all three of those on-screen figures. Next up we have Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, 1080p with the very high preset. The i7 hit 94 FPS on average with a 1% low of 60 and a 0.1% low of 46. There were one or two areas where I noticed a few dips and drops. The i5-12400F on the other hand, 127, so a much increased average here. And the percentile lows were quite a bit better as well with 79 and 60 respectively. Spider-Man does really like that newer CPU architecture it would seem. 
In The Witcher 3 now, the next gen version, 1080p with the Ultra Preset, HBAO Plus, Hairworks was turned off and TAAU was enabled. The i7-8700 hit 99fps on average with a 1% low of 69 and a 0.1% low of 52. The i5 scored 129fps. The 1% low was 82 and the 0.1% low was actually a little bit lower than that of the i7 here with 47. So that's pretty interesting, but the difference between 52 and 47 isn't noticeable in real world gameplay unless you have the frame counter on. You're not going to feel that difference, at least I didn't. Finally, we have Starfield, which is a bit of an outlier. This is basically more GPU intensive in this case. I think the difference in performance may have been more significant if we were using a more powerful graphics card. It doesn't really like those older architecture GPUs, the RTX 20 series here. It doesn't seem to like that much. Maybe if we were using a higher end AMD card, the differences would be more significant. But as with pretty much all the results, where well, you're going to notice the or more of a difference is with those percentile lows. So the average was basically the same, 52 in favor of the i7, actually, as opposed to 51. But the percentile lows were in favor of the i5. 40 compared to 36 as the 1% low, and 37 compared to 33 as that 0.1% low. But yeah, Starfield, bit of a mess on this graphics card, I think. The CPUs can't be blamed here. Now, all in all, the i7... 8700 is still a really solid choice. As I was saying at the start, it's going to depend on where you live as to how much motherboards cost. You may find yourself better off purchasing a pre-built, especially if it's a custom pre-built. You can get an idea of what PSU has been put inside here, the RAM as well. Sometimes it just works out cheaper with this old tech to buy something that someone else has built. But if you do want to build an older 8th gen i series PC, um, you can do so for not that much money, but after you factored in the cost of the motherboard, you might find that it's actually quite close to how much a 12th gen Intel system would cost you. And you might be able to actually take a step down to say like an i3 12100 and save some more money, but still get similar or better performance than an older i7 8700, if you know what I mean. So and there's more of an upgrade path there as well. It isn't all about the comparison and what you get with newer chips though. It's just about seeing what this older hardware can do in comparison to the newer stuff and saying, look, this holds up fairly well. And if you have a lower end, mid range graphics card, it's gonna make even more sense because any extra CPU power might just well be wasted. With all that said though, I hope you've enjoyed this comparison. It's one that I have wanted to make for a few days. If you found it interesting and you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know your thoughts on the eighth gen processor lineup as well as the ninth gen processor lineup because I'm still determined to build an i9-9900 system as well, even though it probably doesn't make that much sense price-wise. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to and you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.